The next time someone hands you a deck of cards and says, go ahead, blow my mind, I really hope you consider this trick. It's super easy, very magical. It seems to have many layers of impossibility, okay? One of the great things about it too is the spectator can shuffle the deck. So it starts with the spectator shuffling the deck. Okay, fine, they can shuffle it any way they want. They don't have to know the Hindu shuffle. Shuffle deck though, right? Then you spread them out, you show everybody they are all different. They There's no pattern, there's no this, fine. Boom. Next, grab a piece of paper, could be your business card, could be a dollar bill, and you write a prediction down. I'm gonna write that down like that, okay? Fold it up. You leave it right there on the table. Classic uh, put up or shut up kind of magic trick, right? Now you say, look, I'm gonna have you pick a couple of cards, okay? I'm gonna have you pick a couple of cards, but I don't want you reaching inside and grabbing cards. Instead, you're gonna use your fingers just to snap. You're gonna choose cards by snapping your fingers, okay? And you make sure someone can snap their fingers. You go through, snap your fingers anytime. They snap their fingers right where they snap their fingers. You cut the cards, okay? See what do we got here? We got a nine, okay? And we got a two. Now, you chose those two cards. We're going to choose two other cards. You're going to do it, and again, with a snap, okay? And again, I'm not going to have you reach in and grab a bunch of cards. Instead, go ahead, snap your fingers as I slowly, and you really slowly, very, wherever they want, nothing tricky. They snap their fingers right there. You say, you're sure. They say, yes. You take the two and slip it right where they said, or where they snapped their fingers. First one. You say, we'll do it again. And again, I'm not going to have you reach in and grab a couple of cards, okay? Instead, I'm going to go through. You go very slowly. There's no force here. They really can stop wherever they want. Let's say they say right there, and you slip the nine in there like that. That is it. Shuffle deck. They snap their fingers a few times. You slowly spread through the cards. Say, we're going to remove the first two cards you chose, plus the cards at the exact spot you snap your fingers directly below and you spread very slowly through, nothing suspicious. Take those two cards out, the two and the one below it. Remember, they shuffled the deck to start. They can shuffle, they can cut. You take the nine that they chose and the one below it, no funny moves. Super fair, okay? You show you got a nine. You got the two, nine, two. We got a king and a three. You show your prediction. That's been someone's been holding on to it or in the glass in the very beginning. And you show your prediction was nine, two, king, three. You are gonna love the reactions you get performing this trick for friends and family. It, the structure, the build, the crazy fairness, and you can go so slowly. The spectator not only can start by cutting and shuffling the cards, but the spectator can be the one that goes through and removes the cards and puts them down on the table. They can open up the prediction. Boom, boom, there's so many cool things about this, and it's easy to do. It uses a technique I bet a whole bunch you are not familiar with. So you're gonna love this trick, and in just a moment, I'm not only gonna reveal the secrets to you, I'm going to show you how you can also use this to do a variation, a different kind of prediction, as well as find the four aces. So it's a super flexible principle, easy to do. You are going to love this trick, okay? On this video, I'm also going to reveal the names of the winners of not one contest, but two, because recently I did two videos, uh, and we're going to reveal the 12 people who won my Sleight of Hand Secrets with Cards project, and the 12 people who won my very cool uh, sort of key and core routine uh, anarchy that comes with a bunch of special gimmicks, okay? That's on this video as well, plus a brand new contest. I'm going to ask you a provocative question about a relationship you have between yourself and the deck of cards for your chance to win private property as well, okay? That's all happening, but first, this is why this coming Friday, February 10th, is so crazy special. This coming Friday, February 10th, and for only 24 hours, you're gonna be able to save an amazing 24% off absolutely everything in my store. All my tricks, all my gimmicks, the DVDs, the downloads, absolutely everything. Plus, you can save 24% off a best value membership to my Inside Deception training site as well. All right, so this is the perfect time to order classics like In a Flash, Revolutionary Card Magic, Slider, and dozens more. Plus, all my newer releases are also available at 24% off. Earplugs, Amazing. Point Blank Prediction, the list goes on and on. Now is the time. Plus, with every physical order, I'm also going to be including two of the specially printed jumbo cards for my bigger finish card trick, one of my worldwide bestsellers. But it's all happening for 24 hours only, this coming February 10th, only at SankeyMagic.com. Click the link for more details right now.
in about 46 seconds. Oh, he's so precise. In about 46 seconds, I'm going to uh, dive in and reveal the secrets to this very cool trick and show you this really sweet technique that's got a lot of different handlings. But first, we got a few things to do today. So let's spend the next 41 seconds announcing the winners of one of the recent contests for Sleight of Hand Secrets with Cards. All right, here are the 12 winners. Leo Brown, David Grass, Acro Acroma, A-K-R-O-M-A, -A, Tim Baldwin Magic, Hannah Hannah, Hannah Hannah, Roland Blaze, B-L-A-I-S, maybe it's blah, French, Anthony Long, Angelo Sorin Sorrentone, 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 Forgone Puppy 79, yes, it's actually Forgone Puppy 79, that's actually a winner, uh, Jay Haber, H-A-B-E-R, Bruce Lee, but there's a double E on the Bruce, and finally Stefano Peroni, Stefano Peroni, U12-1, Please send an email to my team at contact at sankeymagic.com. Give them your real name and your YouTube name if they're different, plus the shipping address, and they will send to you the Sleight of Hand Secrets with Cards project. Okay, congratulations. Very soon on this video, I'm going to be announcing uh, uh, the Anarchy winners as well as this week's contest, but let's jump into this right now. Okay. This move is so sweet. It's very old. It's a very clever use of the double lift. With a double lift, you can do so many things. You can force cards. You can have cards magically change. This is, uh, it's a force of a playing card, but it's sort of a roundabout way, okay? So how do we start? Okay, first deck of shuffle. Now, I am going to teach you also a four ace handling and another different prediction trick on this video, all using the same techniques. So if at any point you get a sense, you think, I think I know what he's doing here, uh, very soon I'll be showing you something else that uh, I know will uh, be a fooler dueler. Okay, deck of shuffle. Deck is shuffled. Now, as you spread out the cards and say, you can see they're all shuffled, what you do is you look at the top four cards, okay? They shuffle the deck, they cut the cards or whatever. You say, look, they're not in any special order. You can see that. And just like that, I was able to see the top four playing cards. Nobody notices it, okay? And you can see here they are. We've got a seven, king, two, and a queen. Okay, those are my top four cards. So I put the deck down. They've shuffled the cards. I've spread, put the deck down, and I'm now going to grab a piece of paper. I got a few slips of paper here, right? And I just write seven, king, two, queen, okay? Seven, king, two, queen, like that, okay? There you go. Sorry. Kind of crazy, I know, but there it is, all right? So the question you might be asking yourself is, okay, so... There's the prediction, and again, you could do this on a dollar bill. You could do it on an IOU. I owe you $100 if I get it wrong. Anything dramatic, and you give that to the spectator to hold, okay? In their clammy, desperate, mortal pause. That's what they're doing there, like that. Now, you say, I'm going to have you pick a card. Pick the cards, okay? We're going to do four cards. You're going to pick them, and you're going to use your fingers, because with the toes, it's a bit tricky. <laughs> That's more than enough mirth for one morning. Uh, you say I'm going to go through, but I, and you cut the pack, keep a little break, pinky break, okay, above the top four cards, and say, but I'm not going to have you reach in and grab the cards with your fingers. We're going to use your fingers because you're going to make sound. This is the three snaps trick. You have to, you need rhythm for that. What I love about this kind of thing is unlike a boring card trick where they're picking cards again, uh, you're getting them involved and snapping fingers is fun. Some people have a lot of, they're very loud. Some people are terrible at them. They'll be comedy antics. Okay, so they can snap their fingers to find the cards. So you square up the cards. We're going to do a riffle force only once. If you thought I used more than one riffle force, eh, you're wrong. All right? I spread through. They snap their fingers. Now, a tip here is you start here and then you dip the cards down to cut the break. The reason you do that is if you riffle and they see here, and then all of a sudden you're lifting a bunch of cards, you're going to get burnt. They're going to see that. So you need some natural, visual misdirection. All right? So they call, you're kind of tipping them either flat or even slightly back. They call stop. Then everything tips down as the thumb at the back lifts up all the cards above the brick. And this way they can't tell, okay? Even if they've gone past the point, when you lift off the smaller packet off the top, uh, again, it, it flies, okay? So you're here, they call stop, you cut the pack, complete the cut, and casually take off the top two cards. And what do we have? We got the seven and we got the king, okay? The seven and the king. The first two playing cards, right? So that's there. Now, I take the king, put it on top. Say, I'm gonna have you snap. I'm gonna go through the cards again. And again, I'm not gonna have you reach and grab a card. I'm just gonna have you snap any one time. And this is so pretty. Because as you go through, you can go really slowly. And the fairness of these next two choices kind of bleed back in time. 
uh, to the first choice because the first choice was a force, but these are going to be super fair. You can really sell these and they look like the first one, which is nice. So you go through, they call it stop whatever they want, really fair. Then it looks like you take the king off the top and slip it in the pack. And that's what you do. But below the king is one of the two remaining force cards on top of the deck. Okay. So let me show you the real work on this. As I say, I'm not going to have you reach into the pack. I'm spreading out the cards so that when I close the spread, I can get an easy pinky break beneath the top two cards for my double lift, essentially, right? As opposed to having a moment when I've done it and I do it, where you're kind of at the back and you're trying to get that break, this flows much more easily, squaring them up, boom, like that, okay? So I've got the break at the back. The thumb gap is here. Everything's clean on the front. They call stop wherever they want. As soon as they do, I just push the double card. I've got a, I push it forward with my thumb slightly from the back, and then I grab it, and I think what's called a straddle grip. Uh, two fingers at the front, fingers at the sides. What this does is, uh, so I'm pushing it forward, grabbing. It makes sure these cards stay together and there's no flashing of edges, right? I mean, you can certainly have them call stop and then deftly, deftly uh, uh, take these two off, okay? And try to slip them in. But notice now it's awkward from the front and I don't, I, I don't want anything spreading slightly. So this is what makes this push button easy. They call stop wherever they want to push this forward, take the pair, slip them inside there, and then square them in, super fair. So the king is in there and directly below the king is the third, essentially third card of the four I need. Then I grab this one, I do the exact same thing and I say again, we're gonna use your fingers. You're not gonna reach and grab cards, get my break. I go through, they call stop, right there. Do you want me to go one more card? I mean, it's so fair. They say one more card, I go fine. Do you want me to go one more card? They say yes. Then I just push the seven with the card below it, right? into the space here like this and give the spectator the deck. They shuffled the cards, they cut the cards. There were literally, uh, the first two were a force, but it looked great. The second two were 100% fair choices. So fair. Then you have them, you can either look at the prediction now or better, I think, you emphasize after they're holding the deck, you shuffled, you said stop, really emphasize, that's the key. Really sell the impossibility of the trick. Then they can spread through and say, I want to remove the first two cards plus the card, the one card at a 52 below the card, okay? You snapped your fingers, you saw me slip it, they remove it, boom. They go through, they remove it, boom. Like this, that and that, okay? Now, I then am uh, showing, you can either now show the drama of it, okay? Or take them and you really wanna hold this up. You want this last thing to be really, really clear, okay? You've got the king, okay? Then you put the seven, and I like to arrange them, the seven king, two and queen like this, and then have somebody open up and they find him possibly. Crazy trick. Now, just a second, I'm gonna show you a cool thing you can do with the same technique. Two, uh, a different prediction trick, sort of as do as I do, but they do it twice, sort of do as I do, 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 something, a Dean Martin reference, so sorry, that dates me a little. Um, and also uh, a four ace thing, I'll show you that in just a second. But first, let me uh, do this week's contest. This is the contest for this week. This is your chance to win private property, okay? Private property is a mentalism gimmick. Uh, it's very cool, uh, you can do a whole bunch of things, crazy predictions as well, and beautiful mind reading. With private property, I've used it, and I'm not joking here, I have used private property, it's a pretty next level gimmick, to correctly divine the color of the spectator's underwear. No joke. The spectator's middle name, yep. You don't have to know beforehand, there's no pre-show work. Uh, and even the four digits of their pin number uh, for a bank card or something like that, you can do all that with private property. So I'm gonna give away 12 for your chance to enter the contest and win for free, nothing to buy, okay? Here's what you have to tell me. Leave a comment down below on this video. Leave a comment down below and tell me if you had to choose one playing card in the deck that best represents yourself, okay? Which one would it be? Which card and why? You might say Jack of Diamonds, okay, fine. Why? You might say the Four of Clubs is actually my brand and you'll have to tell me why. So choose a card that best represents you, leave a comment down below, tell me the card and tell me the why. Okay, you'll be automatically entered in the contest and on my next video, I will indeed announce the winners of the 12 private property gimmicks. All right, so let's jump into this. This is kind of cool. 
because uh, what you can do here is uh, let's say now this is with this version I'm going to show you unless you want to do culling or palming the deck is not shuffled by the spectator to start okay but it's an easy setup okay I could look at the top here for example and see a seven and a king okay let's just say the deck was just shuffled and um, I can then cull if I want uh, cull a king to the top up in there and then a seven okay I go through and again culling is where you slide it to one side well, apparently spreading through the cards and up at the top. But let's assume you're not going to cull, okay? Because that can be a pretty advanced technique. So to start, what you need to have is a, a pair. Let's go with the two black kings. And let's, since we're going to set this up, for this can be a great opening trick for your show. That means it's already set up in the card case, ready to go. And we're going to have the two black kings and the two black sevens. And for you guys, anybody who's seen that something weird going on with the kings or the face cards, they have spectacles on them. All these different, they're actually based on uh, spectacles, glasses uh, I've worn over the years. They're actually, so all the designs, and this is part of my spectacle deck. You'll find it at sankeymagic.com. But anyway, and these are marked cards. They are, but we don't use the marks here. So we've got the two kings and the two sevens on top like this. All right? Now, uh, ideally, actually, it's better if you have uh, the king and the seven and then a king and a seven. Okay? So now we do the exact same handling where we cut the pack, we talk about snapping, they call it stomp like this, and we got two cards, and what do they got? They got the king, and they got the seven, like this. I say, wow, that was amazing, nicely done, I'd love to see you do that again. And they're looking at you sarcastic, they're thinking, oh, very funny being sarcastic, and you say, no, no, I'm not being sarcastic. You found a black king and a black seven. I'd like to see you do that again. They go, oh, you see, look, take the seven, right? Now, you're going to choose a card. We're not going to spread through like before. We, I showed you in the first handling here, guys. Riffle through. They call stop wherever they want. I apparently take the seven, but I'm taking the black seven as well below. Put the seven in there. I say, okay. Let's see you do it with the king now. Here we go. Just say stop wherever you want. They stop right there. I apparently take the king off and put it where. But, of course, below that king is the other black king. So I said, I thought that was a pretty amazing that you found a black king and a black seven. And I said, I'd like to see you do that again. You hand them the cards. Tell me, were you able to find the other black king and the other black seven? So the psychology is quite different. Now, notice, I think it's, and they go through and they find, lo and behold, so cool, so cool this, that they found the other black king. And of course they found the other black seven. But I would argue if below this king, Okay, this is just on the fly if you're going to set this up. If below the king was in fact the other black seven and below uh, the seven, okay, that they was the black king, I think that's very dramatic and cool too. There's a symmetry there that's appealing. So you don't necessarily have to have the king find the king or the seven find the seven. All right, this last handling, the four aces, really sweet, really direct, a great opening if you're going to do twisting the aces or whatever. But first, the 12 winners of Anarchy. Off a uh, last video of mine from last week, you guys won Anarchy. Very cool collection of gimmicks with keys. Uh, there's a bending effect that's test conditions, key bend in the spectator's hand, etc., etc. Kevin Homer. Martin, uh, sorry, Marvin Potts. Sorry, Martin. There's no Martin today, sorry. Kevin Homer, Mar Marvin Potts. Gerard Faulkner. I'm a dinosaur. I am a dinosaur. I'm a dinosaur. Jeff Chandler, Mike Shaw today. Girl what? With a G-U-R-L. And then what? Girl what? Navy Forever. Lucy Ayatonta. Lucky Luke. G-X Kraken. Kraken. Better get Kraken. And Adrian Martinez. U12-1. As I mentioned earlier, email my team, please. Contact at sankeymagic.com. Let them know your real name, your YouTube name, and your shipping address, and they will ship it out. Congratulations to all the winners. Let's finish this up, hey? And before I dive in here, do not forget this Friday, right? This coming Friday, Feb 10th, for 24 hours only, 24% off absolutely everything at sankeymagic.com. We've done this promotion once a year for the last couple of years, and it's usually the response is monstrous, okay? So as always, there are limited supplies and some of the stuff, so get there early. Okay, and make sure and click the link if you want to get more details and things. Let's jump into this little four aces thing. Now, if you're familiar with card magic, you've been doing card magic for a while and magic in general, you probably see where I'm going, but it's real simple. All right, very nice opening effect where you got your four aces in any old order. I don't really care. 
And you'll see that this is a slightly different because with the last one, when I said, oh, you found a king and a seven, nicely done, I'd like to see you do that again. It's like a question. But in this case, of course, when I say, when you snap your fingers, this is the, th the impossible snaps trick. You're gonna do the magic. Go ahead, snap your fingers, you cut the pack, and you say, what do you got? You got a oh, uh, red ace, and what do you got? Another red ace. Hey, very nicely done. Good for you. You found two of the four aces, beautiful. Let's see if we can go one step further. So you, lo you lock this, it's its own little, and now it's its own uh, little miracle, the fact that the spectator called stop wherever they want and they found two aces, that's cool. But now there's a build, okay? It's almost a challenge situation. Can, can uh, the person find them? You could turn to the wife or the husband or whatever the case is. He or she did pretty well. Let's see how you're doing. Let's see if you can keep up here like this. Spread out the cards, get you get ready, they call stop. And again, I'm just gonna slip a, a, the red ace in there. We can do it again and again, get your get ready or anything else that works for you. You might wanna push off the top two cards with the side of the thumb and then pull them back. And as you do, you get your pinky brick that, uh, pinky, your pinky brick. You get your, your brick of the pinky in the next, so you're here, and they call stop. You pull that off, of course, put that in. You get this really nice symmetry. Um, if you're working for just a couple of people, you might want to spread down here. If you're working for a larger audience, though, up they come, you spread through, really build. Boom, there's number one, really build. There's number two, right? You can strip all four out like this. Get this really nice display to the audience here. Okay, there's ace here, ace here, and you're all set to go into your four, your favorite uh, four ace effect, okay? That's it. Click that link. Check out this Friday, Feb 10, 24 hours only, 24% off absolutely everything. Thank you for watching.